Uncle Mort's Celtic Fringe by Peter Tinniswood. They decided to take a boat trip. The weather was clement. The race was swift and the cliffs were steep. What are they call them black crows yonder with red legs, Carter? Chuffs. 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 It's a grand word, it's chuffs. Aye. They've got red legs too. Aye. I wonder if they know they're called chuffs. I don't suppose so. Typical. No one tells you now these days, do they? No. The scarried sea, the rip of the tide, rock dove glide on tippered wings, the brood of the island seething at the waves. The boatman was bald. Serve him right. They had two fellow passengers. My name's Neville, and this is my sister, Verona. Serve you right. They wore canary yellow anoraks, brown corduroy knickerbockers, scarlet socks and climbing boots. They were knapsacked. They were festooned with cameras and binoculars. We've come from Stoke-on-Trent to see the Gannets. I see. Have I mean, you got no hamburger joint in Stoke-on-Trent then? The boat put-put-putted away from the scowling quay and bowed its prow to the rip-raced passage to the island. Legend has it that this island was once the lair of a ferocious Viking pirate who used to carry off the local maidens and, when he had had his wicked way with them, roasted them over an open fire on a spit. Well, I suppose they made a change from currant loaf and baked beans. Legend has it that this island is the burial place for more than a thousand Welsh saints and martyrs. Garter? What? Do you like people who start every sentence with the words, Legend has it, that? I can't stand them. Neither can I. Legend has it? Carter? What? Have you ever wished fervently and passionately for the sudden appearance of a giant and ferocious free wave? Yes. Well, legend has it. Sheer water shaving the waves, stiff-winged and lean. Hurtle of gannet, seal snout and petrol patter. In the skitter-scat of tumbling currents, the boat tossed and yawed, plunged and pounced at the spray. Legend has it that in ancient times, this island was... Carter? What? Their piccalilies are very funny colour in Stoke-on-Trent, indeed. Aye. The boat lolled in the lee of the island. The soar of the cliffs, the screech of orc, the snarl of the surf. The boatman put his hands over his eyes and squinted. Then in a swift and dexterous movement he leaned forward and set the engine full speed ahead. The boat charged at the sheer cliffs. What the hell's he doing, Carter? I don't know. Thudder, thud, thud of engine. The churning wake, the spitting prow, nearer and nearer to the cliffs, the draughts and eddies, the tumble of boulders, the blight of the darkened sun. He's going to wreck us. Do something, Carter. Grab his nadgers. Give him a boiled sweet. Punch him in the... And then... And then the boatman heaved on the tiller. The boat keeled its belly to the cliffs. The engine shrieked. The water gushed over the gunnels and frothed and hissed on the planking. And then... And then, all was calm. The sun shone, the waters sparkled, a blackbird sang. They were in harbour. The collision mat tyres screeched and squelched against the crumbling quay. The boatman tied up and made fast. They clambered out. I'll be back for you in four hours, on the dot. Make sure you're here. I won't wait. And then he was gone. Who does he remind you of, Carter? I don't know. Neither do I. It must be someone famous. Legend has it. Shut up! Steady on, steady on. I'll have you know I used to be a lay creature in Frodsham. And he's an ex-member of the Magic Circle. And so, with a sniff and a snort, the brother and sister set off up the narrow, winding path that edged its way gingerly to the top of the cliffs. I could just fancy a pint. So could I. Right then. Where's the nearest pub? They don't have a pub. Why not? Because no one lives on the island. Oh, I'm not surprised. Why? Well, would you live in a place that hasn't got a single pub to its name? Hmm. Let's bugger off then, shall we? We can't. 
Why not? We've got to wait for the boat. Ye gods. Will this nation never learn the lesson of Dunkirk? They scrambled up the steep, clutching path, panting and wheezing in the sultry heat. When they reached the cliff top, they threw themselves onto the turf and rested their backs against a gap-toothed dry stone wall. The sun throbbed their temples. The hot breath of the wind wheezed through their bones. Their eyelids drooped. Their heads nodded, and soon they were asleep. The storm broke without warning. Good God, Carter! What did you have for your breakfast? The lightning tingled on their tongues. It raised the hair on the backs of their necks. Thunder roar, thunder clatter, sleek slant and hiss of rain, pitchy blackness. Come on, let's leg it. Cowering their heads into the screaming gale and the stinging rain, they headed for the ruined farmhouse. The gorse and the brambles and the sneering blackthorn hacked at their jackets and snatched at their legs. At length, they stumbled into the yard of the old farm. Good God, Carter! Look! A light was shining through a gape-cold window. It was a steady, intense light. It was not flickered or shimmered by the gale. Struth! Do you know? Legend has it. Oh, Le well, don't you start! A shadow passed in front of the light. Truth! Now we've got a ghost! Don't talk empty, lad. Listen to me. I served all through the First World War. I witnessed the horrors of the Somme and the slaughter of Vimy Ridge. Even worse, I had to listen to Wilfred Owen reading his poems out loud. Well then, I'll be damned if I'll let a taffy ghost put the wind up me. If it's Winford Vaughan Thomas, I'll bloody strangle him. Follow me, Carter. Over the top, lad, into battle! <laughs> 